Welcome to this grounding yoga flow for the root chakra. This class will leave you feeling strong, secure, grounded, connected to your body and connected to the earth. It is the perfect class to get out of your busy mind and into the body and into the present moment. For today's class, it will be great if you have one yoga block or even just a rolled up blanket or a rolled up cushion for a little bit of support, which we will need in the end of the class. My name is Yeni and I have been teaching yoga and meditation for many years and I'm excited to take you today on this journey through movement and breath, exploring your root chakra, your first chakra, and creating a vital, healthy and strong body. When you are ready, let's meet on the mat and let's get started. So come into a comfortable seated position, cross-legged. Maybe you want to sit on your prop, your block, or your rolled up blanket. And just make sure you can sit upright in your lower back, in your pelvis, and lengthen through the spine. We take a moment to arrive here on the yoga mat. So rest your hands on your knees or on your thighs so your shoulders can relax. Soften the neck and the jaw, and then Softly close the eyes or at least lower the gaze down towards the ground and begin to draw your attention inside. We want to leave everything behind, anything that has happened today or anything that is planned for later and fully arrive now on our yoga mat. We take a deep breath in here through the nose, fill the lungs with air, and then softly sigh it out through the lips. Good, let's do two more. Deep in here through the nose, and gently let it go through the mouth as you settle into this moment. One more deep in through the nose. Exit through the mouth, fully arrive now in this very, very moment. Good, and then let go of the breath. Let it flow naturally and just take a moment to observe your body. Wonder with your attention through the body, notice if you're holding any tension. If you find any other sensations in the body. Give your attention to these areas, kind of a loving kindness without evaluating or changing. Just observe, become fully aware of your body. And then bring your attention to the points that are touching the ground. Feel where the weight of your body rests on the earth. Give a little bit more of your weight off to the ground. Let this allow you to become taller. So don't just sink down, but rather actively press down into the ground and feel how that lifts you up. Becoming more upright, more stable, more present. Good. And then take your hands together in front of the heart center, lower the forehead down to the fingertips. Maybe you want to set an intention for today's practice, something that goes with our topic of today of feeling safe and secure, being strong, standing up for your values, or something else that comes to your mind now. Then gently blink the eyes open, lift your gaze. We take a deep breath. Inhale the arms up over the side, big circle. And exhale, interlace all ten fingers and bring the palms on top of your head, very gently. Now lift up through the crown of your head into those hands and let the spine lengthen even more. We stay here for a moment, let the shoulders drop. And now we begin to inhale into the chest, let it expand to the sides. And on the exhale, we draw the lower belly in and up as if we wanted to pull it behind the navel up to the heart. Feel how that makes you more stable. Inhale, expand to the sides. 
And exhale, pull that pelvic floor up and lift through the crown of your head. Feel how you become longer, taller. We do three more. Inhale, expand, find width and space. And exhale, find stability, length through the spine, all the way from the bottom to the top. Inhale into the chest. And exhale, ground down, root through the pelvic floor and then grow up through the spine. Last one. Inhale, create a lot of space. And exhale, create stability. Good. Inhale, send the arms up. And exhale, twist open to the right side. We keep breathing this way. So inhale, lift through the chest, long spine. Exhale, root down and twist a little bit further. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, stabilize the lower belly. We come back to the center. Inhale, reach the arms up, fingertips up to the sky. And exhale, twist to the left side, second side. We sit upright, inhaling, lengthening through the spine. Exhaling, twisting open gently. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, stabilize. One more. Inhale all the way up through the spine. And exhale, create some space by drawing the lower belly in. We come back to the center. Inhale, send the arms up to the ceiling. And then exhale, roll into a round of back, send the arms forward. We're kind of sitting on the table in just a little bit. And then release the knees, pull the knees forward to the chest, come onto the tiptoes, and maybe you can even release the feet. Now pull the heels in, pull the knees in, and really feel that core activating. I will show it from the side. Stay where you are. Let's stay for another little moment, really getting ready for this practice. Feel that energy beginning to flow. And then pull the heels even closer. We will roll with a little bit of momentum over the knees, uncross the legs. And from here, we step back into a downward facing dog. Very good. For the first downward facing dog, let's take it easy. Bend the knees generously, push the heels alternately down towards the ground. I'm just starting to activate the feet, the ankles, the backs of the legs. And when you bring the knees a bit from side to side, you also give some movement to your hip joints. Good. And then take the feet a bit wider than usual. Bend the knees generously. Press the belly towards the thighs and look up to your navel. Really lift up through the arms. And then again, practice that breath. You breathe all the way down into the lower belly. And then when you exhale, you draw it in and up. Feel how that stabilizes the lower back and lengthens the spine from the inside. And then see if you can hold that long spine, keep breathing smoothly, but begin to bring the heels towards the ground, just as much as it works for you today. Gentle stretch in the back of the legs. You can also keep the legs bent. Let's take a deep inhale through the nose and side out through the mouth. Good. Now on the inhale, roll forward onto the tiptoes, shoulders all the way over the wrists, high plank. And then bend the knees, leap with the hips up, we come back into our downward facing dog. We do two more, big wavy movement, take your time, inhale, roll forward. And exhale, come back, downward facing dog. One more, inhale, roll all the way forward, press away from the ground, and exhale, send the hips up, downward facing dog. Inhale, come into your plank pose, and this time you will stay. Exhale, broaden the chest, really press away from the ground, feel your whole body activate. And just feel that strength in your arms and your core and resist the tendency to want to give up right away. Let's take another deep inhale here. And with the exhale, send the knees down and in one piece, lower all the way down to the ground. Take your time, point the toes, send the heart forward, open up the chest for a small cobra. And on the exhale, press the tops of the feet down even harder and release the hands of the ground. Take a deep inhale, open up the chest. Exhale, pull the shoulders even further back. Good, inhale here. And exhale, release the forehead and the hands down, tuck the toes. Inhale, come onto all fours. 
and exhale come into your downward facing dog let's do that again dynamically inhale float forward into your high plank exhale send the knees down without curving the back lower all the way down to the ground point the toes inhale cobra and we keep going exhale over the knees for now into your downward facing dog good take a deep inhale long exhale and nice look up to your hands walk in many small steps to the top of the mat and let's stay for a moment here ground the feet down bend the knees generously let the upper body dangle and you can grab opposite elbows if this is comfortable but make sure you're releasing the neck and one more time breathe into that lower belly and on the exhale, draw it in and up. Feel how that gives space in the lower back. One more inhale here. And release. Come onto the fingertips for half forward fold. Ardha Chandrasana, lengthen through the spine. And exhale, fold all the way down. Lengthen the legs, release the head. Let's do one more. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Lift the heart forward. You can bend the knees. And exhale, fold all the way. Uttanasana, deep forward fold. We come to standing, arms over the side. You can bend the knees, long spine for Urdhastasana. Look up to your hands. And exhale, bring the hands together in front of the heart center now step the feet together inhale the shoulders up and exhale bring them back and down release the hands one more time inhale all the way up through the spine and exhale firm that lower belly lengthen the lower back tadasana mountain pose inhale the arms over the side for urdu hasta lift the heart and the gaze and exhale fold all the way through the center hinging from the hips release the head down inhale half lift come onto the fingertips and exhale step back into a plank pose inhale here and exhale lower all the way down maybe this time without the knees if you're comfortable with that point the toes inhale cobra open up the heart press the pubic bone down exhale come back into your downward facing dog inhale here exhale good one more inhale exhale bend the knees look forward firm the lower belly you can step or lightly hop to the top of your mat for half forward fold and exhale fold all the way down we come to standing inhale reach the arms up really lift from the feet through the legs the spine all the way to the fingertips and exhale hands in front of the heart and alongside the body let's practice one more time inhale roll the shoulders up and exhale root down really find that stability we keep going inhale arms over the side one more round surya a exhale fold from the hips uttanasana inhale ardha lengthen the spine and exhale step into your plank pose strong body inhale here and exhale lower all the way with or without the knees maybe half chaturanga if this is within your practice inhale cobra or up dog urdhva mukha exhale down dog adho mukha shanasana take a deep inhale long exhale one more inhale exhale prepare bend the knees firm the core inhale step or hop your choice to the top of the mat lengthen through the spine and exhale fold all the way down we come to standing inhale reach the arms up over the side and exhale tadasana hands in front of the heart we inhale here and exhale, sit deep. Bring all 10 fingers to touch the ground. Now let's stay for a moment. Root the feet down and then bring the strength into your legs. Draw that lower belly in and up as we practice. And from this strong foundation, let the upper body just float up. Take the arms alongside the ears. This should feel much easier than when you rush through this pose. Send the hips back. Feel your legs working. Keep that lower back nice and long. We take another deep inhale here. And then we release on the exhale into the deep forward fold. Maybe hands next to the feet. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, step into your plank pose. 
Inhale here. And exhale, lower all the way or half. We flow through one vinyasa with time. Inhale through your back bend, opening up the heart. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up into the sky for three-legged dog. Now exhale, bring the knee into the chest, firm the core, step the foot through between the hands. Left knee down. Let's stay here for a moment again. Pull the right heel and the left knee towards each other until you can really feel those legs working. Bring that strength from the foundation into your core and then let the upper body come up. Float up the arms alongside the ears. Grow up to the ceiling. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Now tuck your back toes if you haven't. Pull the feet really closely towards each other energetically. You really want to feel the legs working and then slowly lift that left leg off the ground for a crescent lunge. Feel your strong legs. Pull the right hip back, send the left one forward. Fingertips want to go up to the sky. Inhale here. And exhale, vinyasa. So you bring the hands down, try without sliding, step back and lower all the way or half. Remember, you can use the knees. Inhale, cobra or up dog, your choice. Exhale, down dog. Left leg, inhale up to the sky. Exhale, big step forward between the hands, foot under the knee, and then bring the right knee down. Again, firm the legs, pull the knee and the heel towards each other. Really activate the legs and then slowly reach up. Find that expression in the upper body once you have that strong foundation through the legs. Engage the core as we practice and find that expansion on every inhale. Good. Again, prepare, tuck the back toes, firm the legs, and then lift that right knee off the ground slowly with control. No rush here. And all these little wobbles, they're part of the practice just as they're part of life. So if you feel wobbling, then just feel how your body and all its muscles are supporting you and balancing you out. Find space on the inhale. Stability on the exhale. Draw that pelvic floor up. Inhale here, and exhale, vinyasa, step back. And you can always skip those, or you come through the knees. Be very present in your practice. Choose what works for you in all the moments and all the poses. We meet in the downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale here, and a long exhale. Good. Come into the tiptoes on the inhale. Exhale, prepare, look forward. Inhale, come to the top of the mat. Step or hop for half forward fold. And exhale, fold all the way down. Through your chair, come through the legs into your core and then float up, Utkatasana. And exhale, come to standing hands in front of the heart center. Let's stay and breathe. And then prepare for your chair pose. Inhale here. Exhale, sit deep. Send the hips back. Again, inhale from the core. Rise up. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, send the arms up. Exhale, hands in front of the heart center. We will twist to the right side. So your left elbow comes to the outside of your right thigh. Now pull the left hip back, the knee might come forward. Again, firm that lower belly, open up the chest to the right side and try not collapsing in that lower shoulder. We take another breath here. And as we did in the first twist, lengthen through the spine on the inhale and exhale, draw the lower belly in. Now stay low in your hips, inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, hands in front of the heart. We twist to the second side, over to the left. Again, try leveling your hips. And I know you will feel your legs working by now. This is what we want. We want to feel our foundation, our feet, our ankles, maybe now the thighs. Let's take another breath. Then stay low on the inhale, come back into your chair. And exhale, release into your deep forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, step back into your plank pose. 
inhale here and exhale through your vinyasa you can come all the way down or half inhale through your back bend take your time and exhale come into a downward facing dog now walk the hands together so close that the tips of the thumbs will touch reach your right leg up for three-legged dog and exhale step that foot onto the outside of the right hand big step now circle the left heel down all the way 90 degrees your right hand stays on the ground we open up the chest press into that right hand and lift the left fingertips up to the sky for a side angle variation if you happen to have a block, this is a nice moment to use it, but you don't need it. If you just need a little bit of space, you can come onto the fist as well. Open up the chest. Good. Now again, really firm those legs. And then look down to the mat. Pull the feet towards each other, kind of as if your mat was really slippy. So you can feel the insides of your legs working. And then come onto the fingertips of the right hand. Now they have to work more. And now firm the core from the foundation to the core and then rise up the upper body slowly into your warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Good. Your right knee should be pointing forward, rotate that thigh out. And then lengthen through the spine. It's still a Tadasana spine here, so tailbone down, lift your pubic bone. Chest is wide and arms are parallel to the floor. Again, pull the feet towards each other until you can feel the insides of your legs and your pelvic floor lift up through the spine all the way through the crown of your head. Good. Now really find that strength in the lower body, but keep the upper body soft. So we do a little bit of moment, movement here. Inhale, peaceful warrior, lean the upper body back. And exhale, come back into your warrior two. Let's do that again. Inhale, lean back just as much as comfortable. And exhale, warrior two. How, feel how easy it is in, up, in the upper body when the legs are strong. Inhale, come back. And exhale, warrior two. Good. Inhale, lean back and see your peaceful warrior. Now exhale, slowly straighten that front leg. We become even longer in the right side, all the way to the right fingertips. Inhale here. And exhale from the core, bring the upper body back up, arms parallel to the floor, and exhale, come down into your triangle. You can even slide down the leg to make sure you don't go too far. Keep that upper body open. Keep the feet still active on the mat. Pull the feet towards each other on the ground, and then maybe even look up to the fingertips of the left hand if that's okay for your neck. Feel the feet working, pressing into the ground. Good. Last breath here. Still going with that smooth, equal breath. Look down to the ground. You can let the left hand sink into your hip and you have the choice to stay or you move on with me into a balancing pose, half moon. We bend the right leg a lot until the right fingertips come to the ground. We move them out to the right a little bit. Walk the left foot in until you can bring all the weight onto that right leg and press up slowly. Again, if you have a block, this is a nice moment. Otherwise, stay on your fingertips is a bit more of a challenge. And keep your hips stacked, keep them open. Your left toes point to the left. And if you're comfortable, you can lift your left arm up to the sky as well. Now your right foot is doing all the work of balancing you out. Stay soft, accept the wobbles. Even if you fall, you won't fall very far. Try and stay playful. Trust yourself a little bit. Stay observing and neutral in your mind. Let's take another deep breath here. And with a lot of patience and strength, we wanna come back. So we bend the right leg slowly, slowly. You can even keep the right fingertips on the ground, bring them closer. We step the left foot all the way back into the warrior two position, lift the upper body up and stay for the exhale. We float backwards, inhale, upper body comes into peaceful warrior. Exhale in one movement, circle the hands down to frame the front foot, release the left heel. Inhale, step back and exhale, flow through one vinyasa with care or choose a down dog or another resting pose if you rather just want to take a moment and breathe. Take a deep inhale here 
and a long exhale. Good. Walk the hands together for the thumbs to touch. We change the sides, left leg comes up into the sky. Exhale, big step forward onto the outside of the left hand. The right heel windmills all the way down or circles down. Left hand presses into the ground. Right arm goes up for our side angle variation. And we really want to keep the chest open. Stay where you are. I will just turn around so you can see me better. Again, if you need a little bit more space, you can come onto the fist. Keep the space wide in the chest. Keep the legs active, keep breathing. And then one more time, feel that connection with the ground. Feel your legs activate as you pull them towards each other on the ground. Come into the fingertips and stay low. Feel that energy rushing through your legs. Now look down, this will give you stability and slowly come up into your warrior two. Arms parallel to the floor. Yeah. Inhaling, lift through the spine. Exhaling, find that stability. Pull the feet towards each other. Pull the pelvic floor up. Deep inhale. Exhale, maybe sit a little bit lower. Again here, inhale. Exhale, keep that stable lower body. Let the upper body float. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Good. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Exhale, warrior two. One more time. Try to find some lightness. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Exhale, warrior two. The legs are still where they are. And then inhale, peaceful warrior. And slowly exhale, straighten that front leg without pressing through the knee. Lengthen the side body. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, come back up into an upright upper body, arms parallel to the floor and then keep moving on into your triangle with care. The, the core is strong, you lift up the right arm up to the ceiling. And you pull the feet towards each other, try not collapsing into that left shoulder, but really hold yourself up from the core. You can even pretend like you wanted to lift that left foot off the ground by pulling the left hand up and you will feel the difference of engagement in your body. This is what we want to do today. We really want to feel our bodies, really want to consciously use all the little muscles and notice how much control we have. Good. Last breath here, Trikonasana. And then bring the right hand down into your hip. Look down to the mat, bend the left leg a lot. Remember, you can skip if you want, stay in your triangle. Bring the right foot in until you can lift up into your half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Try and keep the hips stacked, the shoulders stacked. And if you feel like it, you can lift the right arm up. The right toes are flexed, pointing to the right. Your feet position is kind of like still in a triangle pose that fell over to the side. And again, notice all the wobbles, all the balancing movements of your body. Try and keep breathing. The more you breathe, the easier it will be. Good, last breath. And then slowly, slowly bend that left leg. You want to take your time, no rush. Try not to just drop down, but place your right foot down carefully. You can left, keep the left fingertips on the ground. Inhale into your warrior two. And stay for your exhale. We lean back, peaceful warrior, inhale. And exhale, windmill the hands down. Release the right heel, activate the core. Inhale, step back into your plank pose. Exhale, flow through one vinyasa of your choice or come into your down dog where we will meet. And then in your down dog, feel free to take a deep breath in through the nose and sigh it out through the mouth. Good. Again, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Good. 
Inhale, come forward into a plank pose. And now exhale slowly, slowly, with or without the knees, but without arching the back. Lower all the way down onto your belly. Point the toes, lift the heart for a small cobra. And then bring the elbows where the hands just were, directly underneath your shoulders. We're taking a sphinx pose. So your arms are kind of in a right angle and your hands are underneath the shoulders. And even though this pose asks for a little less muscle strength, we want to prepare with the same kind of attention and intention. So really press those tops of the feet down, press the pubic bone down and pull the shoulders back, open up the heart space. Feel your hips sinking into the ground. Feel the chest opening. We just take a couple of breaths here. It's a nice moment to calm the breath. Still being, staying very present. Whenever we find that grounding in the lower parts of the body, it's usually much easier to find expansion, expression in the upper body. It's kind of like in real life. Whenever we have the feeling that we're really standing on our own two feet, then it's much easier to dare more, to feel more free and to try new things. So even here, try and find that stability, that connection to the ground, and then open up the chest and breathe in all these new opportunities, all this expansion, all this freedom. Good, let's take another deep breath. And then bring the hands on top of each other. Take the elbows out to the sides to release the pose. You can bring the forehead down to the ground. If you feel any kind of tension in the lower back, you can wiggle the hips a bit from side to side. Now you have two options. We take the hands underneath the shoulders and tuck the toes. You could come over the knees into your down dog. Or if you're kind of safe in your chaturanga, you could try from here with me, releasing only the knees, then the thighs, then the hips, and then the chest, staying low for chaturanga. And then inhale for your up dog, opening up the chest, and exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Take a deep breath in. And a long breath out. Lift your right leg up into the sky. Exhale, right knee into the chest. We step the foot through, firm the legs, bring the strength into the core. Inhale, raise up in the upper body. And exhale, this time take the hands in front of the heart center. We will go into another balancing pose. Warrior three, so lean the upper body forward, diagonal to the ground, and now do what we practice. Take that lower belly in and out, pull the chest open, long spine, bring the weight forward, and then press up into your warrior three. Your hip is closed this time, your left toes are pointing down. Your chest is slightly lifted like in a tiny cobra, rather than looking down and rounding the back. Good. And then strengthen the right leg even more, strengthen the core. We will stand up, pull the left leg through into the chest. And if at any point you lose balance, that is fine. Just join in when you're ready. Bend the right leg. We bring the left leg on top for our eagle pose, Garudasana. You can wrap the leg once or even maybe twice if you have capacity. And then sit a little bit lower. And once you found your stability, you can keep the hands where they are, or you stretch the arms out, take the right arm on top of the left one, wrap the arms again once or twice. You could also grab the shoulders. Whatever works for you today, feel all those points of the body that are connecting now, that are touching. Good. If you're comfortable with a long back, you can come forward with a straight spine, elbows towards knees. Really good. Keep your patience, your calmness. And then release the hands, slowly stand up, bring the left knee up into the chest. And you can set it down for a break or maybe bring it back into your warrior three. We take an inhale here. And then slowly bend the right leg, step the left foot back into your crescent lunge. Reach the arms up. And exhale, hands down, shoes of vinyasa, or just come into your down dog. It's your choice, whatever you need. You can pedal the legs in the meantime. You can set the knees down whenever you need, or you can flow through your movement. Whatever it is you need. 
And then for second side, let's meet in the down dog. Inhale the left leg up into the sky. Exhale, step it through between the hands. Inhale, reach the upper body up, create space. And exhale, lean forward, create stability. Draw the lower belly in slowly. Lift up into your warrior three. Remember the long spine, the spacious chest, the stable core and the foundation. Feel your left leg working. And then again, prepare. You will stand up, pull the right knee through, up into the chest. You can always take a break. When you're ready, God with Asana Eagle Pose, right leg on top of the left one. Rep once or twice. Maybe sit a bit lower. And maybe wrap the arms. This time, left arm over the right one. Wrapping once or grabbing the shoulders or wrapping twice. Keep breathing. And only maybe you want to lower it down with a straight back and a strong core. And these are all just options of the same pose. Choose the one that works for you today, independently of how that looked last time. Keep breathing, last breath here. And then unwrap the arms, stand up, pull the right knee through and up, and then set it down or come back into your warrior three. Just one breath. Inhale here. And exhale slowly with control, set the foot back, crescent lunge, reach the arms up. And exhale, choose a vinyasa or a dog or a child's pose, setting the knees down. This would always be an option. Very good. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. And sigh out through the mouth. Good. And then walk the hands towards the center of the mat. You can bend the knees as much as necessary. Once you're in the center of the mat, walk the hands towards the feet and let the upper body dangle in a deep forward fold just for a moment. Good. And then release the hands, come onto the fingertips, bend the knees a lot like you would for half forward fold. And with your first three fingers, grab a hold of your big toes. Now really lengthen through the spine, you can bend the knees. And now on the exhale, straighten the legs a little bit more, keep the connection between the belly and the thighs, and then release the upper, uh, the upper body and the head. If you happen to have a lot of space, you can take the elbows to the outside, straighten the legs a bit more, but it's not quite important. Make sure you keep that connection between the belly in the thighs. We stay for a couple of breaths and then again practice your breathing. So on the exhale draw that lower belly in and up. Feel how that lengthens out the lower back and allows for a bit more space in this forward fold without pulling on the hands firmly. Let's stay for three more deep breaths. Good, and then release the hands, come onto the tip of the fingertips, walk the hands a bit forward and then heel toe the feet apart even all the way to the outside edges of the mat. We lower the bum down for a squat malasana, so hips between the heels. If your heels are hovering, that's okay. Maybe you wanna support them with your props. And then take the hands in front of the heart center and lift the heart up. Let the hips become heavy, pull the shoulders back, open up the heart. And then again, practice what we have before. So on every inhalation, you open up the chest. And on the exhalation, you draw that pelvic floor in and up. And you feel that connection all the way from the base of your spine, all the way over your back, your neck, even all the way up to your crown. You can softly work with the knees against the elbows just to feel your inner thighs activating. Your knees. Feel all the points of the body that are touching now. 
even the smallest touch, if we do it with full attention, can transport us immediately into the present moment. So really the way you touch your mat, the way you touch your body is kind of how you want to how you want to touch this moment or how you want to meet this very moment. So do it with full presence, with full attention, and with intention. Take a last deep breath in through the nose. Then side out through the lips. Good. Release the hands, bring the fingertips behind you. Sit back on the hips. Bring the soles of the feet together. Maybe you can even open up the feet a little bit like you would open a box. So the soles of the feet are kind of pointing up to the sky. Knees release down. Lift through the heart for Bata Konasana. Come rather forward than down. Don't round the back. Rather think heart wants to go forward. And again, maybe your elbows can softly touch the insides of your lower legs. This is not about pressing down. It's just about closing circles and feeling connection and being here and being present. So every inhalation lengthens through the spine. And exhalation draws the lower belly in. It's kind of like your tiny half forward fold. And exhale, releasing into the deeper forward fold. Two more breaths. Inhale, finding space. Exhale, stability. Last one in. And maybe exhale through the mouth. Good, and then release, sit upright, use your hands to bring the knees together and then point the toes up, bring the belly onto the thighs. You can grab a hold of the back of the thighs and then we slide the heels out towards the front of the mat and we keep the connection between the belly and the thighs, kind of as if we wanted to press a thin sheet of paper between the belly and the thighs. And wherever you can't go any further, you just stay. You can keep the hands where they are, or you can bring them onto the ground or onto the shins. If you happen to be flexible, you can also grab the feet. And of course you can straighten the legs a bit more if you want to, but make sure you're not rounding the back and trying to come forward from the upper back but again move from that lower part of your body from your hip crease from the belly and then again let's practice our breathing and you can choose to look forward towards your toes or maybe you want to release the head this will make a difference in the stimulation in your neck and in your spine so see if that is a good thing for you today it can be very comfortable and it cannot be the right thing so just explore a little bit so you can find a nice stretch over the whole back side of your body, the legs, the full length of the spine. Closing the eyes, resting the gaze and just allowing yourself to become heavy. Again, kind of giving up your weight onto the ground, letting the ground carry you. Feeling the points of connection. Good. Let's take a last deep breath in through the nose. And sigh it out through the mouth. Good job. And then walk the hands towards the body so you can sit up. And then bend the knees and place the feet down onto the mat and make sure you're sitting in about the center of the mat. Now, Make sure you have your prop close to you, so your block or your blanket or whatever you have. You see I also only have a blanket that works fine. And we come to lay down on the belly carefully. You can use the arms for support. And then once you're here, bring the feet close to your bum, press the feet into the ground so you can lift your pelvis just slightly and place your prop underneath your pelvis. So you're not putting it in the spine, you're not putting it all the way down into your tailbone, but you place it in a way that your hips are elevated it slightly over your heart and this should be a nice comfortable angle for your lower back. So once you arranged yourself, this can be higher as well or lower, whatever feels good for you. We will release the feet up into the sky for Viparita Karani. It's kind of a small supported shoulder stand and you can keep the hands on your belly or you can just stretch the arms out alongside the body, opening up the palms to the sky and kind of a gesture of surrender 
We're letting go now in this pose. If this is hard for you in the front side of your thighs, and you can just bend the knees slightly. So this posture shouldn't be strenuous. We want to stay here for a couple of moments. Want to give a rest to our feet, our ankles. They've carried us through this practice actively today and they carry us through life every day. So let's allow them to rest a little bit. Kind of invert that feeling of gravity. Noticing the points that are touching the ground now, letting the hips sink heavy. And maybe you can allow for the exhale to become a bit longer now. The signals, your nervous system and your body that it's totally okay to relax now. It doesn't have to be ready for action. This is a moment of rest. And you can look up to your tho toes or close your eyes, whatever is more comfortable for you. And allow a feeling of calmness to spread throughout the body now. Good. Last deep breath here. And then we bend the knees, stand the feet up. Lift the pelvis just slightly so we can take out the prop and then place your lower back down carefully, slowly, vertebra by vertebra. Maybe walk the feet out a bit further towards the edges of the mat. Let the knees fall towards each other in the center. Rest your hands on your upper body, just noticing that warmth of the palms, that little extra weight grounding you down. And then take the right knee up to your chest. Take the left knee up to your chest. Grab a hold of the lower legs and roll a bit from side to side on that lower back, massaging it against the ground. Maybe you want to take the knees apart and grab a hold of your ankles or the outside edges of your feet for happy baby. Pulling the knees down but lifting the heart so the full length of the spine is touching the ground now. If your bum comes off the ground, then rather grab a hold of your ankles. And again, maybe you want to roll a bit from side to side. And then let me invite you for a short Shavasana. I really want to invite you to take this time for a final relaxation. So let's stretch out on the mat. We'll just take a couple of moments to allow the body to fully integrate all the effects of the practice. So make sure you're lying down comfortably. Give a lot of space to your arms and your legs. Let your groins relax, your legs, your feet just drop out. And one more time. Allow the hands to open up to the sky, nothing to hold on to anymore. Press the back of your head into the ground, lift the upper back off the floor, and then broaden the shoulders and place them down in a way so they can really relax and ground down now. Gently close the eyes. Take a last deep breath in through the nose. Fill the whole lungs up with air. And then hold at the top. Breathe a little bit more in through the mouth. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and then let it go through the mouth. <sighs> Good job. And then release any control over the breath. Your breath will flow all naturally, all by itself, nourishing you. Let go of the control over your body, let it sink heavily into the ground. And just know now that no matter how much you let go, no matter how heavy you allow yourself to be, the ground, the earth will carry you and nourish you as well. There's nothing left to do, nothing to hold on to. Just for a little moment, you can fully let go and relax in your Shavasana.
And take a deep breath in through the nose. Activate the body and live in the body, side out. Bring small movements back in small places, the fingers, the toes. And maybe circle your wrists, your ankles. Take the feet together, stretch the arms above your head. Take another deep breath. <sighs> Good. And then stand the feet up, take the knees towards the chest and roll over to one side. Keep the eyes closed just for another little moment. And just give yourself a hug and enjoy that moment after your practice. How does your body feel now, your breath? The quality of your thoughts, the velocity of your thoughts. And then keeping the eyes closed over one side, gently press the hands down into the ground, sit up just as we began our practice. Cross your legs with a straight spine. Close the eyes one last time if you've opened them in the meantime and lengthen through the spine. Take the hands together in front of the heart center. Bow your forehead down to the fingertips and remind yourself of the intention that you set for your practice today. And this is just a moment of observation, of reminding ourselves, never of evaluation. It doesn't matter how you felt throughout the practice. Just keep reminding yourself of this quality you want to cultivate in your practice, in your life. And if we do that over and over, it can just manifest very naturally without any strain. When you're ready, slowly open the eyes. Thank you so much for your practice. I hope you feel calm, grounded, and present. I have a guided meditation for the root chakra that reinforces the qualities that we practice today in our yoga practice. So maybe this is something nice to add on to your practice now or to come back to in the next couple of days. I will link the video in the end screen. Make sure to check it out and make sure to see all my other videos and maybe leave me a like. Let me know how you felt in this class in the comments of the video. I would love to hear from you and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.